Hello and welcome back. I've been painting on Jersey for a couple of weeks and I like the idea of their coastal fortifications. I found this lovely red and white tower and went down to the beach at low tide and did a few sketches and then came back again when the tide was in a little bit and decided the best thing was to go up the hill to a car park and picnic area and get the whole view. Having done a quick sketch of the tower itself they're always slightly different when you transfer them but what I've done is just tried to make the least number of marks and I've put in the big pieces of rock and the tower and just a few indications of the hillside behind where the trees are so the next thing to do is to put in a nice warm sky so I'm going to use cobalt turquoise and French ultramarine together and I'm going to wet the sky in places first so that I get a more varied wash. Just use the point of the brush to go round the hillside. Don't worry about anything too much. Most of the trees are dark so they could go over it. It's mixing up some more paint and then I'll get a slightly different colour mixing it up again which will all add variety. Starting from the far corner, going back onto the pad. This is rag paper and it's glued to a block. You just use a knife and get the, the next pad off. So it's quite good at taking a wash. It won't buckle or anything. And in the foreground, I've got foliage in the shade and foliage in brilliant sunshine. So I'm going in with lemon yellow which I'm mixing with some of the sky colour just to give continuity to the drawing and the dark paint will go on top of the light paint so I'm just filling the space. For the rocks I've mixed up burnt sienna and yellow ochre and then any highlights I can put in in Naples yellow or water it down but I just want them to be warm against the sea so first of all I'm covering the white paper I'm using a number eight brush just getting the rough shape in and the same with the little one now the wall at the back this isn't all rock some of this is blocks it was a start of a sea defense so i'm just going to put a little bit in there and then this one has got a lot of seaweed on it but i'm just going to put the shape in make it a little bit lighter Just drop the Naples yellow in on top because it's got quite a ridge. Now I'm just going to get the Naples yellow and mix it with some raw umber this time. Different colour, only slightly different. And do up and down marks. It is wet so it will bleed but it just shows the way the rocks formed. And same over here. And even the little one can have a few up and down marks. Then this one is more distinctive because it's nearer. Doesn't matter if you miss a bit because there will be other things to put on there. But it shows that they are going up to a ridge. I'm going to get some burnt sienna again. Mix it with some French ultramarine, make it quite dark, and then go back to the rear rock and just put a darker line on. From the light green all the way back, we've got some distance now. And I'm changing to a smaller brush, number three, and I'm going to put a hint of a sea wall in the background. 
it is just a hint because it's so far away and there's a couple of slips coming down onto it for launching boats so i'm going to go in with some yellow ochre just at a diagonal and the change in pigment will move the paint now the beach is a different colour entirely so I'm going to use Naples yellow and Brazilian crimson to make a biscuit colour just add a little bit of the brown I've already used for the rocks diluting the paint quite a lot starting at the back there is some standing water there so it's why it's very diluted just put in the hint of sand but it's a different colour from the rocks and it actually starts at an angle there so I can put that angle in and this one and then at the back it starts just as the fork finishes it's a little bit of reflection where there's standing water the next thing I'm going to do is stick the red top of the tower in because I don't want to accidentally lose the space to the hillside encroaching on it so it's darker on the right than the left as there's a bit of shadow and it is curved so as it's curved it needs to be lighter in the middle now, so i'm just going to make it lighter in the middle i'm just going to drop a little bit of orange in and while I've got the same colour, I may as well do the bottom. And that isn't level, so that's a, it's got a defensive wall on the left. So on the right, it goes all the way down to ground level. And it seems to be about halfway. So again, a little bit more paint on the right and on the left. And then just half a brush full of orange in the middle. And then go back in with a clean brush full of red on the right to make it a bit darker and at the top just to show it's catching the sun so the next thing i need to do is the skyline so i'm referring to the sketch i did earlier and it's just sort of all wiggly nothing complicated so i'm picking a size four brush which has got a reasonable point just make up some field color first which I'm using lemon yellow and a bit of viridian and some yellow ochre because it won't clash with any of the rocks sort of a warm color and there's a lot of field so I'm just going to make a line and then I'm going to move the paint because I want it to be quite light to start with just to claim the space it needs to be quite light because it's a reasonable distance I don't necessarily put everything in when I'm drawing it. I leave room to just make marks. So I'll just wiggle the line just to make it less dominant. And I can come back to that. So I'll start on the top left and put some woods in. And I'm going to use the Payne's Grey again. And then mix it with French ultramarine and a little bit of lemon yellow. And the trees are all circular. So I'm going to drop different colours in and let them merge to make it more random. Just cleaning the brush off. I can drop some yellow in there as well, which I'll drop chrome yellow in this time. Just to give a little highlight of the tops of the trees catching the sun. Let's put some on a fairly dry brush and it'll find its own way. I don't want it to look spotty, but just to give a little bit of definition. And there's another area of woods further forward so I can do the same thing move the paint around make a little bit more blue 
and drop the blue in between the green. I'll do a random hillside for me. Put some in at the top, wipe the brush off. You've got to remain in control, so keep dabbing the brush off. You don't want the brush too wet or with too much paint on. Sometimes less is more. And that's different to the hillside at the back. And then I've got a much more vibrant green further forward, which is just a bit of headland. So I'm just going to put a line in and then drop other colours into the line. And then there's some buildings. And I've got a very dark tree at the back of it, so I'm just going to add some Payne's Grey and then drop the same paint into that to give the tree colour. And there's a bush that's the same thing. It's always worth giving it a moment to dry if you're doing anything like that. And then what I can do is just dab off the paint in front. So I've still got the grass area. And then at the very front, something different growing. It's quite blue. I'm going to get the brush and just lose one side of that as a lost edge. Now I can do the area around the tower, which is trees with a very dark waterline. So I'm going round the box on the edge of the tower, round the hatch on the roof and round the white flagpole. And I'm going to drop other colours into that and pull it back. That way I haven't lost too much of the tower. I might have lost the flagpole. And it's quite dark, so I'm going to add some more Payne's Grey. If you haven't got Payne's Grey, just a very dark colour. Just put in a very dark waterline. Because it's low tide, there is an indication of a beach. But anything dark there will help the white line on the tower stand out. Now I've got to take that hillside up a bit further, so I'm just mixing my colours together. So I'll just put a rough area in, and I've left a gap for a couple of houses, which I'm just going to do as white blocks. I'm not going to do anything else. And there's a little bit of field at the top. And then I can move to the right, where I've got trees going to where it meets the beach all the way up so make a line where it joins the beach it's always something you can map it off against and just scoop it up from the water line and make a rough round edge now again i need a dark water line so we've got a little tiny bit of Payne's gray there And then I've got a triangle of woods that comes down nearly to the point here. So I use that as a mark. I'm going in with a small brush because it is a reasonable distance away. And I don't want to be heavy handed. It needs to recess into the picture so that the foreground shows more. And that goes all the way up to the skyline. You could do the skyline first if you wanted to, but... If it's all a bit vague, it's easier to do it in bits. If you've got six pine trees or something that you can identify very easily, then there's, there's no danger of you going over anything. But if it's very mixed like this, it's easier to do it in sections. I'm just going along the hillside now that it's had a chance to dry and just putting in a few more areas. Just to give a little bit more detail, I'm not touching any of the houses at all. I'm leaving those as white rectangles at the moment. And the hillside does come through the bracken that's on the foreground area. So I'll just put some dark behind there. And 
do the skyline as well. Just a few little squiggles. It's so far away, you don't need a lot of detail. I'm mixing up a reasonably large quantity of French Ultramarine and Viridian for the sea. Because I want it to have a warm glow. And I've got the number 12 brush. I'm starting from the right, working my way in. And when I get nearer the rocks, I'll change to a smaller brush. I want to get a reasonable covering. I don't want a hard line, so I've got to go down till there is a rock. You can easily take it off the rock afterwards if you've accidentally gone onto it. But it'll give a better visual impression if you've done the big area all together. Gives it that summer holiday feel. So now changing to a smaller brush. This one hasn't got a number on it, but I think it's about a number eight. Going back to the top, I've got slightly more control over it. Taking the paint further in. It was the fingers of blue that made me want to paint the picture. I just thought it looked really lovely. And this is about half tide. If you go there with full tide, there's no rock showing at all. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of violet to that colour. I've got cobalt violet here. Just put that in the shallower water. And there is blue on the other side of these fortifications. Not much, so I'm just going to put in a little triangle of blue. And then the tide is slightly on the beach. So I'm going to bring the water round just very lightly. Just very thin wash of paint because the sand is showing through and the same in the foreground but there's a tiny bit we use the side of the brush just to put a hint of blue on but it is more dominant at the back here there's obviously a channel of water So I'm going to let that dry now and whilst that's drying I'm going to concentrate on the beach which I used a little bit of Brazilian crimson to make the sand slightly biscuit colour. So I'm using Brazilian crimson and yellow ochre and then a little bit of Naples yellow to soften it. If you haven't got Naples yellow, you can just use weak yellow ochre and the sand does come all the way back. And I've got lots of stones on this first beach. So I'll put those on in a moment or two. I just want to get the colour first. Next, I have a go at the rocks now the sea's dried. And I've mixed yellow ochre and burnt sienna together. And I'm just putting it on the very top of the rock. It's 
quite a rich colour. So a little bit more yellow ochre. Because this is rag paper and it will sink back a little bit. I'll put the paint on at the top. And then I'll go in with brown from the bottom. But before I do that, I'm just losing the edge. No more water. Just moving the brush. And then the bottom of the rock is quite dark. So I'm using indigo and burnt sienna together. And it's a bit bright, so I'm going to add some Payne's Grey just to dull it down a little bit. If you haven't got Payne's Grey, you can dull it down with some French Ultramarine. It just needs to be knocked back so it's not too dominant. And just go in from the bottom. At the very point here, it's quite brown. I'm just following the line of the rock and lipping the paint upwards. Using my sketch as a rough guide. And there's a lot more towards the middle. So I'll put that in and then work away from it, having taken most of the paint off the brush. And then just lift the brush and put it down again. So it's skipping. And it's a bit darker at the top, a few recesses in the rock. So just drop some wet paint in. And then there's a couple of marks and a little bit on the top. So there's a little bit on the top. I'm just going to wet the brush and dry it so it's clean. And then just feather the paint out. And then at the far end of the rock, sort of fingers of paint that I'm putting on. I'm not sure whether it's seaweed or something stuck there, but And then there's an area that's slightly dull. This might be a flatter area where the water's lying and it's not getting so much sun reflected on it. So put that on, that looks quite three dimensional now. And the first rock has got a very dark top, which is quite useful because it separates it from the beach. And I'm going to drop some more paint grain to the paint just to give it a bit of punch. Then let the brush down a bit with a little bit of water. Add paint going in downward motion. I'm going to feather that out to infinity with a clean brush so it's not too much of a harsh line. And then return to the front of it, the seaward side. And there's more brown in some places than others but the front area and the second finger of rock is quite brown just letting it skip over the tooth of the paper to give a dappled effect and it goes round in a slight curve very ridgy rock it's got lots of crevices in it but they're all fairly uniform like little slots so 
so I'll just go through that line and take the slots both sides of it and then add a little bit more stronger paint and just gently add a few darker areas to punctuate it. Now I'm going to go in with some yellow ochre and I haven't cleaned the brush too well. It's a little bit dirty, which would give me a different tone. And that's again standing out nicely. Now the third one is partly man-made. It's got blocks that were laid. So I'll do some with the number three. And I'm going to return to a flat brush. A flat brush, they're not expensive because they're not special hairs or anything. And they're very good for doing blocks. So you can just put the brush down. And every now and again, drop it into a different colour. It does the work for you. I'll just drop some darker paint in. And let that dry a moment. So I'm just going to put down a few little dots. Then I'm going to go over them. Get some water and a wet brush. And just gently soften them using the side of the brush so they're less dominant they do go all the way up the beach but that's enough for now because i'm going to put foliage in and i can just tint the side of this rock a little bit more make a different brown blue and soften it with some Naples yellow and just go in from the bottom and the same here to make it look really gnarled. Now back to the wall I need a smaller brush because it's further away and that's got all sorts of nooks and crannies and growth and a curved end. They've built the wall on top of a rocky promontory. So we've got rocks and man-made blocks or stones that have been shaped. So we've got a bit of both. And I'm going to take a slightly darker brown and do upward strokes to show the facets of the rock. And then I need a lighter colour, so I'm going to use Naples Yellow and Payne's Grey. You could use Homemade Grey. And just drop it in there. So it's just had a little bit of a moment to dry. And it should just put a few marks on it. And there's a big shadow on the side of the tower base. So putting that in, the sun's catching it. Just as this is paper with a tooth, just flatten it off a little bit. Now I need an even darker colour, so I'll add some indigo. And there's a darker patch right at the end and a line. And then there's some steps here with a line underneath. And I need to make it a little bit grey, so I'm going to add some yellow ochre. And a little bit 
Brazilian crimson just to give a different colour and put in the water line. Tidal mark there. And just get a clean brush, just feather out the end of it. And go back the other way, make it a bit darker. And then there's some very dark rocks on the beach. There's a wavy edge. And then more rock that's even lighter that comes down back onto the beach. So I'm using more yellow ochre. I'm just going in from a different direction for that. And I'll give it a moment to dry and then I can put some opposing strokes in. I'm now just putting a few strokes on the back area by the grass, just mixing a slightly different colour. Dropping it in. Then just getting a darker brown on the brush, just putting a few little marks just to show that it's an uneven surface and a little bit round the bottom of the tower and that's got two levels. So to show that it is round I'm going to add yellow ochre to the middle and that will just bring the middle forward a little bit more. make it look circular and the beach has got lots of rock on but I don't want a beach to look too complicated so I've just picked up a mixture of my browns and I'm just going to put a few little marks on the side of the brush because there is a channel of water going through there so if that's a slightly brighter colour the water will show more but you don't want to put every pebble on the beach in you just need to do it very gently. I'm going to go round the back of the area I've just done where there's a channel of water and bring it forward and then there's reflections in front of the tower but the channel of water does go slightly round the other side it's obviously a different level there so I'll put that in And then there's like a sandbar, just leave a gap for it. And then the water here is a different colour, but it comes in. So I need to add some more violet to it. If you haven't got violet, just add a little bit of crimson. Just shows it as a different colour over the sand where it's very, very shallow more wet sand than water but I can go back to the area by the tower which has had a moment or two to dry and just put in a few strokes in a different direction just to show that it is rocky terrain and then I've got reflections in the water so I need a rich brown for those reflections can be a different color they're often a bit warmer It's not necessarily red because it's coming out from the base. And just to add a little bit of red 
further in. There are one or two people in the water which I'll just indicate head and shoulders afterwards but the next stage is to do some foliage and I've got lots of foliage over the picture which I started to indicate in my sketch just to remind me. For the foliage I'm using a rigger. I'm just going to go the way the plant grows. We have a central stem and just take the fonds out and down and then they sort of subdivided so I'll drop some dark in first and then go sideways with the brush and just make the central stem bolder and this is more in clusters so they're different stage of growth perhaps more protected that the fonds are narrowing towards the edge tapering and out and again just taper them down every now and again drop some more paint in to give variety as long as it looks reasonably okay you're fine. It's just it was I thought it was rather nice the way it framed the view. I'm just going to go back now that's dried a little bit and put some more on there. They do sort of have light coming through which makes it more interesting but you could sometimes you need two coats to put it on. And another one you still see the beach. And then coming forward, you can put as many of these on as you like, but it was just, I thought it was nice the way it framed it. And this one comes down over the rock. And it's closer, so the fronds are in more detail. So I'll put the sideways ones on first. If things are further away or nearer, you have to vary the way you deal with them. There's also a slight colour change that this one is more in silhouette. So I'll drop some dark paint on when I've finished. And because of the angle, I can't see the fronds at the back so much. They're sort of lost. So I'll now make these ones a bit bolder, putting more colour on and thickening them up a bit. And then go back with a centre stem. And I've got some other greenery that's growing up and it's got broad leaves so I'm just mixing some Naples yellow with the green I'm going to change to a shorter brush change to a number three do a stem a couple of stems and then just do a point and work back do a point work back some overlapping just to add interest to the picture it's no more but sometimes you just see natural gaps and you think oh that's lovely I'm not going to put on a hundred leaves I'm just making a few marks and a few dappled things around and then I've got lots of other things going through so what I'm going to do is just wet the page Use some water to wet it. All over the green. And I'm going to drop in some more vibrant green because some of these plants are in the shade and others are catching the sun. So just drop some in. Ring the changes. Tint it a little bit. And then take it past the line back to the brighter green again just giving a suggestion of plants coming up and then get a clean brush just dried off and take the paint for a walk move the paint that you've just put down 
just give a suggestion of some grasses coming up and then ring the changes again darker color do exactly the same just take the paint for a walk and then back to the very vibrant green again and then i'm going to give it a moment to dry and then add more bracken but i just want it to dry off for a minute first we've got different strokes going into it and a few just wiggly lines Now I've got a big, I've given this five minutes to dry and I've got a big bracken coming through with a curve on it. So again, I'll just put the sideways fonds on. And interestingly, some of them are different colours here. It's catching the light. So now I go back in and just give them a bit of body. And then there was some very bright green where some of it was catching dappled sunlight. So I'll just drop some very bright green in and run that through. And then put in a few details of other plants behind it, just a few little lines just to break it up. And change brushes go back in with a number three and I've also got some brown bracken in here which gives some variety just mix up all the greens together and try and give a suggestion of a natural hillside We use Indian red for the dried bracken. You can use any colour that you've got. I'll just mix it with some yellow ochre. And that, because it's dried off, it's all crumpled. You just make a suggestion. And then go back in, because it's a sunny corner, with more of the brighter green just do up and down strokes to show anything that's there and i'll change to the rigger go back in with that and give a little bit more detail the rigger only holds more paint so you can do things without stopping but if it's a small area there's nothing wrong with using just a normal thin brush is probably easier for you to use whichever brush you're more familiar with. Just breaking it all up so it's not a solid area because the rocks are a solid area. So this needs to have variety to lead you into the picture. Changing colour and doing some bending over the other way. I'll just put a tiny bit more dark on this. So there you have it, Archie Rondell Beach and Tower, St Catherine's Breakwater and a lovely day out. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you'll try painting on the spot yourself soon.